People often ask me why, you know, why did I get interested in microchipping? And really where it happened was 10 years ago when I had a bird stolen. And I was in Oregon and people literally came in, wrapped the bird up in a blanket and took off. And my bird wasn't microchipped. I didn't even know what one was at that time. But I did get calls from a few pet stores along their route saying, because I had put it on the internet, I put it in newspapers, I had put it, I put the bird on television. I mean, you can believe what I did, trying to get this bird back. And then this, these people would call and they say, "Well, this is an eight thousand dollar bird, and these people are offering to sell it to us for fifteen hundred. We can imagine it's your bird, but we can't prove it, so too bad." So anyway, then I got a call from the police in Colby, Kansas because they'd seen it on the Beaverton police reports and they said that, hey, we don't know if it's your bird, but it might be. And it's at this house in Colby, Kansas. Well, I was on the next flight, which was a, I went through tornadoes and everything. I mean, it was really quite a trip, but anyway, it did end up being my bird. And all the time, and of course I was without this bird for six weeks, doing everything imaginable, everything everybody does, the posters on the wall, the posters in the vet shops, going to all the shelters, newspaper advertising, I mean, everything. Rewards, I had a reward up to $2,000. Uh, and finally, when I actually was thinking I was going to get my bird, I did kind of make a little bargain with the man upstairs. And I said, you give me back my bird and I will do something good in return. And I, at that time, I spent, I had microchip clinics after I found out about them, I researched it. And at that time, when I'd asked somebody about a microchip, they thought I was talking about a computer. Another question I get real often is, okay, what is a microchip? And there again, like I say, 10 years ago, hardly anybody knew. Now I'm very happy to say most people do. But a microchip, it's, a, it's the capsule, it's about the size of a grain of rice. And it's injected into the animal like a vac vaccination with the needle. And like when dogs, it's just right behind their neck. And the birds, it's in, in their uh, chest muscle. Horses, they put it in the shoulder muscle. Um, it ha there's no pain to it. Like I say, I had some microchip clinics in Oregon where 200 animals, and I stood there right next to the vet doing all this. There's no pain. They'll go right out of there just like they would if they just had a vaccination and, and be begging for food. The vision that I have, and I mean, and this came to me 10 years ago in part, but quite frankly, now after the Katrina thing, more parts of it fell together. And what the vision I have is that everybody would microchip their companion animals, whether it be a dog or a cat or their horse in the back barn. Everybody would chip their companion animals, and I would believe that it should be mandatory. I would think that we should get rid of dog licenses. Dog licenses do not accomplish anything. And the same money that goes for buying a dog license that buys you nothing could buy a microchip and a registration. That would be step number one. Step number two, we have to have a universal scanner. This is a scanner. Uh, it's, it's the size of a remote TV thing, and I mean, it reads chips. Now there is some problems because different companies are coming in and they're competing with each other and they're trying to say, all right, now, if you use my chip, I can only read it with my scanner, which makes shelters and anybody trying to scan an animal need to have an arsenal of scanners, which is absolutely not to the best interest of our animals. So we need an American standard that says whoever wants to come into the chip manufacturing market of America, fine, but it all has to be read by one scanner. Whichever company makes it, who cares? But one scanner. So that's part of the program. Then the other part of the program is that we would have a renewal form. Right now, the current systems, you register your pet once in a lifetime. Well, unfortunately, People move, pets die, they give the pets away, they sell the pets, whatever. And unfortunately, most of the database is garbage because it's never been renewed. So I'm saying that the vision I have is that 
you would be reminded like you are with your, your driver's license. I mean, you renew your driver's license. And so people say, oh, well, we'll never remember it. Well, if you get a renewal notice, you'll sit there and look at that and say, oh, I don't have FIDO anymore. I gave FIDO to my neighbor. So you take that little registration to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, hey, you've got to fill this out and renew this. Uh, so you'd have that reminder. So the information, like with the Katrina dogs, we had, through Animal Samaritans in Riverside County, we had 29 dogs. Two of them had a microchip. None of the, the information on that was of any good. So those two never got home either. Uh, out of 29 dogs, there were two dogs that got home. Uh, but that's not a very good eye. And when you think of the thousands, the thousands that will never, ever see their families again, uh, it's just it's heartbreaking. Uh, so anyway, that, that's part of it. And then the final part of this, which is actually the best part, is to have one national database. And all this database would have on it is the chip number and R, just the letter R, which says, hey, I lose my animal. I call up the registration service and I say, hey, my animal was stolen or it's lost or whatever the reason. I give them the details, they verify because they've already got it registered that I'm me and the animal I'm talking about is correct. They put on this website the chip number, nothing more, and they are. And this is one website that everybody knows about. And so then your groomers, that you've just you've just got a whole country full of people. Seven dollar an hour clerks in a pet retail store will be scanning every unknown animal because they're gonna look at that computer and go, Wow, R, and they won't know if that reward is $5 or $5,000. So they are motivated. So we have just completely, we've got all the retail stores, the grooming shops, the vet clinics. We've got everyone scanning. Everyone will be anxious. Anytime they see an animal they don't know, they're going to check that animal out. And this is going to get animals back home. The Katrina thing, instead of trying to look for their pet with a picture that didn't look like their pet at all, if they could have just looked under their chip number, they would have had their animal located and it wouldn't even have had to go home if they had no home to go to. But they would have known, hey, my dog's in Los Angeles or my dog's in Palm Desert. And as soon as I get home, I'm going to get that dog back. Um, that's the way it should be. And it's this is so simple. Oh, and then the part that I didn't cover is in my vision, and I mean, this is not cast in semen, and maybe that somebody knows a better way, but in my vision, this should be, the registration part of this should be run by the government. We already have an animal control department that runs throughout the country. Some people call it animal services, the same department. This should be where this one registration database is, and it should work as well, if not better, than it does for DMV. Hey, you, you lose your car in Louisiana, you can figure it out in Oregon. Um, if you lose your boat, it's registered. You, I mean, we can find our boats, our cars, and, and everything else, but we can't track our animals. That's, that's criminal for a country like America. That is absolutely criminal that we don't have a better system to get these kind of little guys back into their mommy's arms uh, when they're lost, stolen, a disaster. Hey, I happen to live in Palm Desert. And we're supposed to be getting this big earthquake. What are people going to do even here? Uh, if our homes are destroyed where well, we can't live in them and we have to go to a hotel, how many hotels do you think are going to take all our, the people with their three dogs and two cats? Um, we need decent shelters, which we don't have enough decent shelters, and we just got a brand new one, I'm very proud of that. But we need decent shelters, we need decent ways, hey, if I had to, I would want to go to the shelter and say, hey, take my little baby, I have no place to live right now, but I'll be in touch. And she's registered, and it's all set and cut and dried where she's at. And we get back together. I can't think of anybody that would lose, it's just a win-win-win situation.